Some folks down the road had a big walnut tree cut down in their front yard. My buddy Jake and I and his neighbor are gonna go over there. We're gonna cut it into slabs, keep it from becoming firewood. So if you've ever been interested in learning how to chainsaw mill, come along, I'll show you my process. But you gotta grow a lumberjack beard. So itchy. We got to the house and assessed the situation. This is the first time that I saw the tree. There was a six foot section and then a larger diameter crotch piece that we knew was gonna look amazing inside. We started with the longer log because we figured that would take the most time. The first cut requires us to use guide rails. This is gonna give us a flat surface that allows us to cut the rest of our slabs. We used lag bolts to attach my guide rails to the log. This is simply some two by fours that I jointed in plane to make rails flat and square. My rails are about 10 feet long and 18 inches wide. The heads of the lag bolts are then recessed into the rails so that the sawmill doesn't hit them. To make the first cut, we attached the rails and used a level to ensure that we didn't have any twist in our rails. Again, we want to make sure that this cut is as flat as possible. I rode the mill across the rails, trying my best to keep the mill flat onto them. The first cut went quick because we just removed enough material to clear the lag bolts. After that, we started cutting slabs. We cut everything to two and a half inches thick. That'll give us a lot of flexibility with the material once it dries and it's usable for projects. A huge help is making some spacer blocks. When I go milling, I like to bring blocks with me that are inch and a half and two and a half inches wide. I set the blocks on my bar and then rest the mill on top of them. Then I tighten the bolts of my mill. It lets me quickly set up the mill so that it's accurate and level. It's a huge time saver. I'm using a Granberg Alaskan sawmill. I'll put a link in the description so you can see the specs on it. My chainsaw is a still 661. If you're milling for the first time, follow the directions on your mill for an explanation on how to attach it to your saw. We got about a quarter of the way through the log and realized that we're going to be just a tad bit over capacity. I'm using a 36 inch bar on my chainsaw. The sawmill takes up a little bit of space, so we're really cutting just under 30 inches. We decided to flip the log over on its side and trim off one of the edges. Then we rolled it back and continued milling. This actually worked out really well because we only cut away some of the sappy area and it made it easier for me to stack the slabs at home. You'll notice that we're using several wedges. This is critical to getting good cuts. The weight of the slab can bind on the bar. I like to keep a wedge in the back end of the log and then add them every few feet as I mill. These are simply some two by fours cut into a wedge, although I do have some manufactured wedges too. We didn't have very much space for a gratuitous water splash green reveal on the job site. So I did it once I got home. There were three of us, which was really awesome. It meant that we didn't really have much downtime. Everyone wanted to take turns cutting, and as one person gassed up and refilled the bar oil on the saw, the others moved slabs and rechecked the tightness on the bolts of the mill. We ran like a well-oiled machine. The last cut of the log was done by propping it up and letting gravity do the rest. We ended up with nine good slabs out of this one log.
the wider crotch section presented its own challenges. Unfortunately, we did have to trim off some of one of the sides so that my mill would fit the log. But we made sure not to cut away the section that had the figure, plus we are able to take that section that we cut off and then mill that and get some quarter saw pieces out of it. Milling is really taxing on a chainsaw. In between each cut, we refilled the bar oil, gassed up, and cleaned out the air filter. Depending on your saw and your settings, you can easily go through as much bar oil as gas. Keeping the oil filled is going to make sure that you don't overheat your bar. This log wasn't very long, so the cut time was really much faster. You can see that we had a pretty smooth operation going. Everyone jumped at the chance to do something. I think that we were all just really excited about what was going to be in the next slab because they just got nicer and nicer as we cut. I mean, seriously, look at this. I'm using ripping chain on my saw for all of these cuts. The angle of the teeth is a little bit different compared to regular chains. I'll put a link in the description so you can see what I'm talking about and find chains that work best for your saw. It's also critical to bring a chainsaw wrench with you when you go milling. Randomly check your saw to ensure that your chain is tight. It also helps to bring multiple chains with you, swapping them out if your cuts start to drastically slow down or if you hit any metal. Metal is inevitable whenever you're milling yard trees. It's pretty incredible how beautiful each slab was as we cut them. These slabs will have to dry out for about a year or so in my shop. I have a video on how to flatten slabs and stack them for drying. Check it out if you want to learn more about that process. This was the majority of our haul for the day. 18 really nice slabs plus some extra pieces. We split them up three ways and I know I can't wait to be able to make something from them. In the meantime, they're going to sit in my basement for a while and dry out. I want to give a special thanks to the homeowners who allowed us to go over to their house and save that tree from becoming firewood. If you enjoyed this video, then stick around. I might have some chainsaw milling videos coming out in the future. Hit that subscribe button. Until we meet again, get in your shop and build something awesome.